everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. If you're new to my channel, I make videos about what we're doing here in our English country garden in South Buckinghamshire. That's equivalent to a zone 8A in the States. In today's project, we're going to be pruning the screening trees that we have behind me. Now these are Viburnum tinus. Viburnum tinus is a really dense evergreen shrub with dark glossy green leaves and it can be grown um, it's a, as a standard, which basically means it's like a lollipop shape. So it's a trunk with the bush on the top and I'm guessing that nurseries do this by clearing the stems off and in fact if you've got a large um, old viburnum in your garden then you could train it yourself by removing the lower branches and create a lollipop shape yourself if you've got a central stem that's quite um, vertical I suppose. <laughs> I mean you could have a wonky stem that would work too. Anyway, we bought these as small standard plants quite a few years ago and every so often we prune them. I would say we probably pruned them every other year, something like that. But this year we had a really, really cold winter. Um, it wasn't cold the entire time, but we had some severe frosts and very low temperatures. And I think that the tree has responded by losing a lot more leaves than it normally does. Now all evergreens will lose leaves. It's just you don't normally notice because those leaves are replaced really quickly. Um, but what has happened is we've lost so many leaves that in fact the shrubs or the trees look really bare. So we're going to prune it quite hard, first of all to get the nice round shape that we normally have. Um, and secondly, because I really want to stimulate growth. Now, it's not a particularly good time to prune the trees because actually in early summer, viburnum will create these lovely um, sort of paniculata shapes, panicles of white flowers. Uh, some of them have got little pink tinges, but ours are white and the bees absolutely love them. We have a lot of bees around these trees, which is so cute. And it's got this little hum of noise, which I really love. Um, the flowers do smell, they do have a scent, but some people don't really like the scent. To be honest, because our trees are so tall, um, they're not really at you know nose height. So we don't really smell the trees. I have no idea whether they smell wonderful or not. Um, I've never really noticed an aroma. And once the flowers have passed, um, you get these dark black berries through the winter unless the birds eat them, which I'm guessing ours do because we don't get very many berries despite the fact we've got loads of flowers. Now we have three trees here and they are budding up and I can see that the flowers are forming. So by pruning at this point in time, we are going to lose all the flowers. But as I said, um, we really need to prune the trees because they've lost so many leaves in the last few weeks. Um, I really want to prune them so that we stimulate growth and it's the growing season at the moment. So by pruning them, it will create um, new shoots and new leaves and hopefully um, reinvigorate the trees and they'll bush out and um, form this lovely screen that we normally have in this area. So these three trees we planted here in the middle of this sort of courtyard area that I don't often show you in our garden, um, mostly because we haven't had the patio laid yet. As you know, um, a lot of our garden is a big project. We've got a really lovely raised bed here where we've got some really nice shrubs and some aces. And in the spring, it comes to life with loads of bleeding hearts, um, dicentra, I think they're called. And we have a lot of daffodils. And then in the autumn, we've got loads of Japanese anemones and so it looks really good all year round and the trees are just like this really nice sort of bit of structure in the middle of the courtyard and they just create a nice framework and give this area some substance. So I should also tell you that viburnums will grow in pretty much any soil whether that's you know um, clay or chalk um, so long as it's free draining um, if it's moist that's also good we've got very heavy clay soil here and it works fine and they will also grow in full sun part shade or shade um, so they really are a very good plant to have if you're looking for some evergreen structure um, these viburnum whilst we bought them when they were probably only just a bit taller than me, maybe six foot high. Um, the most that they'll probably ever grow to is about 15 foot, so four and a half meters. Um, I would say at the moment, they're about three, three and a half meters tall at the moment. And the trunks themselves, um, I've read that they're not going to get 
more than about four inches in diameter, which is about 10 centimeters. And I'd say ours are pretty much there at the moment. So they're never going to be like these really big, bulky, massive trees. But as I said, they're really good for like um, evergreen screening above a fence line, or if you just want like a nice piece of structure in the middle of your garden. And they tolerate pruning really well and, you know, great for topiary if you are so inclined. We just um, prune ours into round-ish shapes as best we can. Um, obviously when they're this high that involves a ladder um, to get to the very top or a long handle pruner. So I will be getting Richard to prune these trees because he has a head for heights and I don't really like going up ladders. Um, so uh, yes we're going to do this project together as we do with quite a lot of the bigger projects in the garden. So these are all the leaves that are coming off. So and there are bits of damage these are the flowers and then you can see that it's pushing new growth everywhere so whenever you cut try to cut back to a leaf node but you can see there's lots of new growth coming so even though it's losing they're all losing leaves and they're all a bit mottled the tree is actually still fine so part of the process of the pruning is to take off anything that looks dead and these ones don't seem to have much new growth um, on them, these ones here. And so I'm going to get Richard to cut those back to where we can see healthy growth. <music> It's a little difficult to see but we have tried to create a rounded shape we've taken quite a bit off all the trees are sort of slightly different you know we're not professionals but it's good enough and it probably depends where you stand um, what the tree looks like at the moment and then this one on the end we planted it too close to our um, raised bed and so it tends to try and grow into the um, Prunus of Managawa. We've got four Prunus of Managawa there, which are looking glorious, um, but we have to sort of make it quite lopsided um, in order to stop it, to prevent it growing into those trees. So all the cuts we made, we made back to a leaf. And you can see that all the way along the branch, it's got leaves. There are new shoots coming out. So the tree's still healthy. All, a lot of the flowers are still remaining. So we have cut off some flowers, but um, the tree is still absolutely full of flowers. There are still gonna be loads of flowers this year. Not that we grow them for the flowers, but um, they are an added bonus and the bees like them. So as you can see with the viburnum, we also have um, young shoots growing from the base of the plant. So these 
are all just growing up from the base of the plant and it's part of the tree's natural desire to be a bush and it's important if you want your tree to remain a standard to just chop these out probably before they get to that size but we're going to take these out now and then we're going to um, clear the area of all the debris and the weeds and give it a good mulch and a feed. <laughs> So the product that we're using, this is not an advertisement, but I just thought people might be interested. The product we're using to um, fertilize the trees is this after plant and it's RHS um, endorsed, inspiring everyone to grow. And it's a bioactive plant food called Evergreen. Um, and it says it's got root grow and mycorrhizal fungi and it pr promotes healthy growth for evergreen trees. And you just sprinkle 50 grams for um, one tree and you should always measure but it's unlikely we're going to measure we've got a little scoop inside that we use like that so it's a little blue scoop that's got 10 mils on it so you know that's five of these per plant I'm guessing and then you just fork it in and give it a water and then we will put um, the composted bark mulch on top so we're going to give the trees a quick water even though it's done nothing but rain for days because I think we're going to have a warm weekend and it might not rain again and it's just I feel like it might be a good idea to water the food in and then we're going to mulch them with farmyard manure which is the mulch that we're using at the moment and I'll link that below in case you're interested it's a really good mulch uh, we find it really helps to retain moisture it's really good to um, it helps benefit the structure of the soil because the worms bring it down, but it also suppresses weeds and it just means we don't have to weed um, nearly as often if you smother everything in this farmyard manure, which I love. This is not an ad. Again, nothing um, that I'm putting on the channel at the moment is an ad, but there are affiliate links below if you're interested in seeing what we're using. Gosh, it's been such a lovely day to do this. The skies are blue. It's stopped raining for a minute. No thunderstorms. It's just been really fun to be out here in the garden with Riches. And that's one job done, which kind of always hangs over us um, because it's a labor of love really having to get up the ladder to do it. But they're gonna look so much better in about a month's time when everything's leafed out again and they've got their new leaves and they'll be in flower in a matter of weeks. Um, and then they will just um, get through the rest of the season and brilliantly. Anyway, I really hope that you found it interesting and useful. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, do give it a like and I would really appreciate that. And if you're new to my channel and you'd like to subscribe to see more videos about what we're doing in our garden and how we're planning it and changing it over the coming seasons and what we're growing, then do subscribe to my channel. Um, it'd be really fun to have you along. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.